Hi, this is Ralph. In an earlier video, I created a new blog over at Blogger and at WordPress. Well, right now, I'm logged into my Blogger blog. And I've logged in, and I'm at my dashboard, and I can see the blog that I created earlier. It's called Ralph Phillips on YouTube, and I've got one post last published on April 15th, 2010, which is uh, several days ago. And let me go ahead and uh, right-click on View Blog here, and let me open up in a new tab. And this is the blog that I had created before. I did a little test post on there. Now, there's a number of different things you can do to help customize your Blogger blog. Because I'm just using one of their default templates, and they don't have a big selection of default templates, and you might want to jazz it up a little bit more. So, let's go ahead and investigate this. So, back at my dashboard here, I want to go into the, I'm going to jump over to the settings area first, just so we can see some of these options. And there's lots of options up here. So this is the, uh, these are the settings for my individual blog. And you can have multiple blogs within your Blogger account. Uh, clearly for posting, posting is pretty straightforward. I want to create a new post, I give it a title, and I put in my text, uh, my images, and you can also go into edit HTML mode and put in some basic HTML. And there's options for publishing a post. And you can also change the date that it does get posted. So let's see. And let me go under settings for a moment here. And let me just want to go through some of these options on, on the blogger settings. So under basic settings, certainly here's where you can change the title of your blog. You can give it a description. Some of these descriptions actually do show up on the blog itself, depending on the template. And you can put their blog in their listings. There you go. Select post editor, the old editor, the updated editor. So they have, they're regularly making changes to the blogger interface, so they've got some new options. I'm going to click out there. I'm going to ch choose their updated editor and see what the latest and greatest is. And let me go ahead and save those settings. Now for publishing, for the most part, you'll simply use the blog spot address. And notice here it's reminding me what my blog spot address is. When you first create your blog, you choose the URL you want. I chose ralph-youtube.blogspot.com. So once you get your blog going, you don't really want to change this because that's the one you've promoted and used. So put a little thought when you're picking your URL. So that's for publishing. You do have the option to do a custom domain, point your own registered domain to your blog. So if you've purchased a domain and you've got FTP information for that, you can do that. Formatting options, how many posts per page, date format, time formats, things like that. Comments, will you be showing comments? And that's one of the cool things about blogs is that people who read your blog can comment on it and you can form kind of a discussion, kind of a, a, a group related to your topic. Who can comment? Archiving techniques, site feeds. This is really kind of good stuff. There are a lot of blogs out there I enjoy reading, but I generally don't go to the blog web address. I subscribe to their feed. So by default, blogger blogs do have an XML feed or an RSS feed. So people can subscribe to that. And I would encourage you to promote that feed so people can subscribe to your blog and they'll get automatically notified when you post new content. Email and mobile connections, you can get email notifications related to your blog, new comments and things like that. You can also create a secret email address to post to your blog. So if you want to post to your blog via email, you could do that. And that might be kind of nice because then you could do this from your cell phone, uh, your PDA. All you have to do is just send a message to this particular email address. And of course, you don't want to announce what that email address is because any email that gets sent to this address is going to get posted to your blog. So that's pretty cool. And then we have uh, OpenID, so you can use your, your login for multiple sites. Jump back over to Settings and Permissions. This is especially good if you want to add multiple authors. So once a blog gets really big, and some of the most popular ones out there, you'll notice that they post several times per day, and there's different authors involved. So definitely take some time to go through the various settings on your Blogger blog. Now, I'm going to jump over to the Layout category, and I can add and arrange page elements. And this makes things pretty easy. I've got an About Me section, a Follower section, a Blog Archive section. Um, I can go and edit the Follower section and I can choose to remove this option. It's a little bit low down here on the recording, but I can remove this option, so that's not on there anymore. I can go to Add a Gadget, and I can look at all the different fun choices here. 
pages, search box, HTML or JavaScript, so you can put that kind of stuff in there. You do AdSense ads, put a picture, video bar, things like that. And let me go and try the video bar option. So I'll go and hit the plus on there, and that'll include it in there. Title, video bar, YouTube. Um, and let me go and put in channel. I'll put in my own channel. Keywords. I don't really need any keywords. And then it gives me a little preview of some of the videos in my channel. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And I now have this video bar option on my blog. And let's see what else we can change about this. Obviously, we can add a gadget up at the top, and there's also room down there. Um, you can also put some on the bottom on some of the layouts. Now, let me head over to pick a new template. And these are the various blogger templates available. They're not very exciting. They've been around for a long time, so they're, so they're well used. Notice they also have this Edit HTML option. So if you get familiar with HTML and CSS, you can go in and you can customize the CSS and HTML provided to really make a custom blog. What I would uh, certainly encourage you to do here, if you're really skilled with HTML and CSS, is go ahead and pick one of the most simplest templates they have. They're, they do have a very plain vanilla template. Go ahead and copy all the HTML and then store that and then start to make subtle changes to yours with your own CSS and you can make some very customized templates. Now since we do have access to this, you can also get some other free blogger templates from the web. So let's see how that, how that works. I'm going to jump over to the web here. I'm over at uh, bloggertemplatesfree.com and I'm just going to scroll down and I'll go ahead and pick one. So here we go, this one's pretty fancy, be cute, and it's highly rated. I'm going to go ahead and click on this option. Okay. And I'm just going to, obviously the live demo would be good, I'm just going to jump right over to download. And it's, I'm downloading a zip file. There it is, be cute. I'm going to check it out, see what they have. Okay, and they've given us a few key files. There's the XML file, which is going to be the actual template part. There's a readme file. I'll open that up in just a second. And they give us an images file with uh, some of the key images that they use for this particular template. Let me go back one level here. Let's pop open their readme file. All template images are hosted on premium servers. You don't have to worry about the template images being deleted by free image hosting sites. So basically, the images that are going to show up in this blog, they're doing absolute references, and they're stored on servers other than over at the blog spot address. So the images will be stored on one server. The template, of course, is stored on the blogger server, but they're assuring us that everything's going to be OK there. All right, so this is the basic you know, the basic files. So there's really not a lot to do except just get that XML file. Date modified, there it is, be cute. Let me right click, extract all. Okay, I'm going to go and extract all those files. This compressed folder there. Okay, so now I can go to downloads, be cute. All right, so back over here, I'm going to choose my file. There it is, there it is. I'm going to get the XML file and choose Upload. Okay, now this is pretty normal here. The templates that I'm getting off the web that are for free, they often don't support this widget program. So that's something that I'll have to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those widgets. Changes have been saved. I should be able to view my blog. So let me just jump over to where my blog was already opened. I'm going to do another F5 to refresh. There we go. So uh, it looks pretty good. Now I notice my title is a little too big for the space, Ralph Phillips on YouTube. So I have a couple choices with that. I could change the title of my blog, or I could go into the CSS for this page and I could edit how that font size is displayed. So if you're comfortable with CSS, then that would be a, a, a change you could make. But now I have a blogger blog that has a much more interesting look and a much more unique design compared to the default templates. And you can see that was pretty easy to do. So you just need to find the XML template for free, or there's some that you can buy too off the web, and then upload that in the edit HTML area of your blogger settings.